welcome back. A million thanks, guys, for the positive reaction to the last video on ReQ. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate all the really great comments. I mean, just fantastic. That's exactly what I'd been hoping for from this channel was to ask questions and let me help you out. I got um, Matthias from uh, the Swedish Root uh, uh, Reaper user group got in touch with me and I'm now a member there. I can speak Swedish. I write Swedish a bit. But when I'm talking about technical stuff with Reaper and stuff, I answer in English. So my apologies to you guys if that's a problem. You can prata svenska, men yeah, it's got that. So do it. So sorry about that. I, I do my best. Um, uh, I, I just want to help. So if I can help, it might have to be in English. I'm sorry about that. But technically, what? Well, because once I go into Reaper, my brain switches technically to English, and poof, there you are. Very difficult to change. But anyway, really appreciate Matthias. You're a dude. Thanks, mate. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk to you today about reamping. Um, it was something that came up, and I think it was actually Matthias uh, mentioned it in the, the, the Swedish uh, Reaper group. And it was something I've been meaning to talk about because it's something I wanted to show my way of doing it because you are told you need to buy these expensive pedals and all the rest of it, these reamping boxes, etc., etc. which, strictly speaking, you do need a reamping box of sorts. Um, but it doesn't have to be the expensive $200 radios or whatever. I'm doing it with the same box that I used. If you go back and watch my video on, I think it's recording bass against all odds, I'm using the same box here in reverse. It's got a line input, so I'm taking my line output, going into the line output input of the DI box, and then coming out of the output of the DI box into my amp, and hey presto. So what we'll do is we'll show you quickly my that was set up. I had to make up a special lead uh, to connect everything together, but I'll show you that very quickly. Excuse bumpy cam, here we go. So, here is my um, patch bait. This is a, a normal jack. I've actually used a, a phono um, plug that you use for a hi fi, so it goes from that into this little mono mini jack here, which goes into the line input on my DI box. I'm trying to see if I can see that. So if you can see that, it's going into the line in there. Now the only thing is, by using the line in, let me just put you down here again. Um, there is no control over ground lift or EQ or anything else that's on this box because you have to actually use the instrument in to have control over that. So if I've got ground problems, I may well have to use another uh, DI box, come out of this DI box into another one, use the ground lift and then go out of that. I don't know, I haven't reached that kind of stage yet. I haven't hit a problem like that. Is what I mean. So anyway, so what we've got, uh, let me just show you where we are. We've got uh, a guitar, the DI guitar is here. I'm sorry, I'm just checking whether I need to solo. I'm going to solo my mic. Uh, so hopefully you're still hearing me and I'm going to solo this guitar. So this is the DI guitar that we've got. So I'll let you hear it. DI guitar, yeah? Okay, nothing much to talk about. So, the first thing that I do, or one of the first things I do, is I will use an effect on a DI guitar. I'll use a, an amp sim, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off the cab sims here. So I'm going to make it into a straight DI. In fact, I'm going to make the second one into a straight DI, okay? So I guess we've got ourselves a, a kind of mess of mess of kind of style amp, I think. Um, 
But whatever, I just messed around and found something that I liked and dialed it in. But I'm sending it, so if we switch the actual guitar sim on, and then what I'm doing is I'm doing a, a, a hardware output. So I'm sending it out to my Pro 40 Line 3, which is what I showed you, the plug on the front of the amp there, uh, the patch bay there. Okay, so that comes out of there, it goes into the um, it goes into the the DI box, comes out of the DI box and heads on over into the amp. Okay, so the amp is then mic'd up. Now what I'm doing is this is the whole point of why I'm using the Fender Bassman, and I'm using a two by fifteen cab out there because I've already recorded this guitar through a, a Fender Bluesbreaker on high gain with a 1 or 12 cabinet that's inbuilt in the, the, the Fender Bluesbreaker and it sounds fantastic but I'm trying to give a bit of girth so I'm using my bass rig via this amp sim to you know fill it up so I'm making it up with the same mic that I mic'd up my bass go back to that video about my, when I was recording the bass you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm using a, a kick drum mic on my bass cab on a 15 inch speaker. So it gives you a lot more oomph, a lot more bottom end. So if we have a, a look at this, so if it, it heads out of there. Now I'm basically, I've got a mic on it and I'm using input three, which is what the mic's connected to. So if we unmute that, we can solo that as well. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to turn off the master send on this DI track so that you can just hear what's happening as it comes out of the, the return track. So let's have a listen to that. Sounds great, doesn't it? So what we'll do is we'll take a quick recording now. So I've got this set up to record. Uh, let's just record a little snippet of that and we can go backwards and forwards and you can hear the difference between the amp sim and what it would sound like with recording real air. So let's just hit record and I'll fast forward a bit here. Now, not forgetting, I've got control with the amp here. I can mess with the the, the, the tone controls, the gain, etc. You know, it's, it it's so opens up so many options here. What? Okay, so you can hear that. Let's uh, have a listen to what it sounds like with the, the amp sim, but let's put some speaker simulation back in again. I don't know, let's give it a, could we do a two by, two by 12, shall we? Um, yeah, let's just leave it at two by 12, give it a listen. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, I'll let you guys have a listen to that yourselves and you can compare and decide. For me, if I'm going to reamp anything, I want to send some air out of a speaker and I want to mic it up and I want to record that. I understand that people in, in apartments, bedrooms, whatever, may, might not have the opportunity 
to do that, but you could build an ISO box. You could, it doesn't have to be that loud. This is the whole point. I mean, okay, I'm using a 100 watt amp and a two by 15 cab out there and I've got a live room and I can blast it. But, you know, I can do that. I haven't always been able to do that. I've done it with quieter amps. I've put them in boxes of, you know, suffocated them. I've cranked the gain up, but pulled the master volume down to get something and blended it in together to give me a, a sound that I want. So, I mean, I just wanted to share that and give you hope that's something useful for you and a way to, to output um, signals in Reaper using the, the, um, the hardware output. Because you pay, basically the only latency you get with that is the latency that you have set. Um, let me bring this up so you can see. Uh, is the latency that you've got set here? So I've got that my latency now down to 256. So that means that you know when I'm playing these back, you you hear next to nothing. There's no latency involved, and because it's a hardware send out, and then you don't really notice it. Okay. So I hope that's helpful, guys. I um, hope to see you in the next one. And take care. Bye now.